welcome back. We're in a season called Advent. The word Advent simply means arrival. During this season, we take time to reflect on the arrival of Jesus as a child. Today, I'm lighting the candle of love. Love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's found in John 3, verse 16. Friends, we should be using this week's leading up to Christmas to reflect on what the Messiah means to us. I invite you to read Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 with your family to see how God, the Savior, will change everything. Last week, we started our new series called Wait For It. Friends, sometimes we get so comfortable with the way things are for us. But let's remember to be open to change, especially when the changes are to help make things better. When we hear something that is hard to believe, we like to question it. After all, it's unbelievable, right? That's what the leaders did in last week's lesson when John explained to them who he was. John the Baptist made it very clear that he came to prepare the way for the Savior. John knew that people would think he was important, but John was given a message that if the people just waited for a little bit longer, the true Messiah would come and change everything. The people in our story and us have something much better on the way. Someone who will save everyone. Sometimes we feel impatient when we don't know what that change will look like. Instead, we can wait with anticipation. Friends, let's listen to our Bible story found in John chapter 1, verses 19 through 28. And then our big idea for today. Afterwards, let's practice our memory verse for the month. Hey, welcome back, friends. I'm playing Operation. Have you ever played this game before? You have to take this tweezer here and try to get all the different parts out of this guy without letting his nose light up. So far, I got the funny bone, the wishbone, and the spare rib. Now, I just need to get the butterfly out of his stomach. Oh, this is so difficult. Are any of you really good at this? Wait, look, we have a comment from a cool friend coming in now. This message is from Nathan. Oh, I have a cool cousin named Nathan. Okay, Nathan says, Hey Callie, remember last week's story? How did John the Baptist prepare everyone for the Savior? That's a fabulous question, Nathan. And I have no idea. Let's listen to today's Bible story while I keep trying to get this butterfly. <laughs> it's time for our Bible story. Today, we will continue to learn about John the Baptist. He was telling the people about Jesus, right? Yes, he was. Remember, he wore camel hair and didn't care much about what others thought of him. All right, the dude that ate locusts. That's the one. John's job was to get people ready for Jesus. So he started by baptizing people in the river. What's baptize? Is that like a bath? In a way, yes. But it wasn't about getting people clean on the outside. John led people to the river so that they could be clean on the inside. Anyone who got baptized showed that they were sorry for the mistakes they made and wanted God to wash their sins away. You can't wash away sin with soap. No, you can't. Only the Savior could do that. So John was baptizing people to prepare them for Jesus. But you see, the people had been waiting for the Savior for a very long time. Like a week? Nope. One year? Nope. Five years? Hundreds of years. Whoa. The people had been waiting for the Savior for so long. So when John the Baptist came around, some of the leaders thought that John was the one they had been waiting for. But he wasn't. No, he wasn't. John explained to the leaders that all he was doing was preparing the way for the Savior. Once Jesus came, he would be telling the people all about God and what they needed to do in order to be saved. John wanted everyone to be ready for what Jesus would show them. By baptizing people, John was helping them understand that their hearts would need to be changed to accept the Savior when he came. Look friends, I got the butterfly out! That took a lot of work and many, many tries, but it was really worth 
worth the wait. And Jesus was definitely worth the wait. Can you believe people waited hundreds and hundreds of years for the Savior to come? Even though it took a long time, the people must have known that all they needed to do was wait and see. The Savior will change everything. So you see, Nathan, John the Baptist prepared everyone for the Savior by helping them see that they needed to ask God to forgive them for their sin. Once they were ready in their hearts for Jesus, they would understand what Jesus came to do. Well, friends, I have to run along now. Jeremiah, please. The big idea is wait and see the Savior will change everything. The memory verse. But as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior, to hear me. My God will hear me. Micah chapter 7, verse 7. Great job. Thank you so much. There are many things that we can do to make good changes in our community. They will take time, but we cannot give up just because we do not see the changes we want right away. Our world may not be perfect, and many people might be feeling hopeless sometimes. But wait and see. The Savior will change everything. Friends, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, your faithfulness helps us look forward to waiting. You help us to wait patiently and expect big changes. Thank you for sending Jesus to change everything. Help us to continue to partner with the Savior to make more change in this world. We know it's worth the wait. Amen. Thank you, friend, for joining us today, and see you all next week. Bye-bye.